So my name is Paul Sautier. Uh, I'm a clinician scientist working in the field of pediatric hematology here in Marseille. So as I have the pleasure to start this session, uh, I would like to welcome you again in this uh, beautiful city. I am sure you're enjoying the meeting and uh, I hope that you will also enjoy your entire stay here in, uh, in Marseille. The, the cells that produce platelets in the bone marrow are called megakaryocytes, and the number of platelets that are produced is dependent on the megakaryocyte mass. So, in order to produce more platelets, the megakaryocytes has to get bigger. And how can it get bigger? It can get bigger by becoming polyploid. This means that its nucleus contains an unusually high amount of DNA compared with normal cells. So, the early megakaryocyte progenitors is deployed just as almost all the other human cells. And then it differentiates and it becomes tetraploid with four copies of each chromosome in the nucleus. Then it becomes octoploid with eight copies of each chromosome in its nucleus. Then it can have 16, 32, 64, and even 128 copies of each chromosome in its nucleus. Amazing. This is unique to the megakaryocytes. This process is called polyploidization. And uh, uh, what do we know about the, this cellular process of the polyploidization? We know that uh, uh, transcription factors, which are called RUNX1 and FLY1, are really uh, pivotal in this regulation. And uh, one really important protein is MYH10. And in the early megakaryocyte progenitors, MYH10 accumulates in the cleavage furrow that supports the separation of the mother cells. This is just like classical mitosis. However, in the later megakaryocyte progenitors, MYH10 is no longer expressed. And consequently, the cytokinesis, the separation of the daughter cell, fails. And this produces a tetraploid cell, and so on, and so on. This is polyploidization, and this finally supports a large platelet production. So, as you have understood, MYH10, this myosin, MYH10 silencing is a key event in this process. MYH10 has to be silenced for this process to, uh, to continue during megakaryopoiesis. And uh, 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 the expression of MYH10 is controlled by two important transcription factors that are called RANX1 and FLY1. They collaborate to silence this uh, uh, gene during megakaryopoiesis. But other transcription factors could also play a role in this process. As a pediatric hematologist, I care for children with constitutional thrombocytopenia, because like other genetic diseases, they are often diagnosed during childhood. And in Professor Alessi's lab, I started studying some of these diseases, especially those associated with transcription factor defects during my PhD. So these are rare diseases, and one could say, okay, these are just uh, a dozen patients in the world, it's no need to, to study them, but it's not true. Why? Because studying these rare platelet disorders helps identifying and filling knowledge gaps in megakaryocyte and platelet biology. And uh, it can also uh, help to understanding pathophysiological mechanisms of much more common diseases. So uh, this is something I find fascinating and this is very important to study the rare diseases uh, of the platelets. Um, Professor Alessi, in my lab, um, coordinates here in Marseille the French Reference Centre for Inherited Platelet Disorders. 
this reference center is part of the French network for constitutional bleeding disorders called MEMO. And as a part of a global effort to decipher the genetic causes of inherited thrombocytopenia, we developed in Marseille a 308 gene panel sequencing. And uh, this strategy led to the identification of two novel GADA1 variants in two unrelated French families. And GADA1 is a transcription factor, just like RANX1, just like FLY1. This, tran this transcription factor belongs to the GADA family. It's a, a really important family of transcription factors. It has a transactivation domain on the N-terminal part of the protein. Just, you can see it in green. And it has also two zinc finger domains that are important for DNA binding. And GATA1 is important for the regulation of the megacarcite and the erythrocyte lineage. And as you can see on the slide, Several other uh, variants, constitutional variants, were associated with anemia or thrombocytopenia, the one shown in black on the slide. So, at this point, we had identified these families with rare uh, GATA1 variants, and we had a team meeting with Professor Alessi, with my thesis supervisor, Marjorie Poggi, and with other uh, team members. And uh, Professor Alessi told me, Paul, listen to me. Your PhD is almost over. You're going back to the hospital. You have to finish your residency. Then you have to start your clinical fellowship. Trust me, you will have no time left for research. We have to go quickly. With Marjorie, you have to find something interesting. And I want the first draft in one month. OK. So I looked at Marjorie. I was a little bit panicked. I said nothing, and we started to quickly leave the room. But as we were about to close the door, Professor Alessi said, oh, by the way, I forgot. I want something for nature. OK, so this time I was panicked. So finally, I went out of the meeting room, and uh, we started to look at the literature. And we found something really interesting. We found that in several models, in several murine models of GATA1 deficiency, so these are mice that completely lack uh, GATA1 expression, the megacarcite, the GATA1 deficient megacarcite, have a ploidy defect. So we hypothesized that GATA1 could also have a role in MYH10 silencing during megakaryopoiesis. So then we asked the patients, the GATA1 patients we had identified, we asked them to come to the clinic. We took a blood samples, and we isolated the hematopoietic stem cell uh, progenitors that were circulating in the blood of these patients. And we cultured the megacarcites derived from these cells. And we, um, we showed that these megacarcites with the GATA1 variants had also a ploidy defect associated with a small size. So, apparently, the GATA1 variants altered the, uh, the ploidy process, and maybe uh, due to a, a defect in MOH10 silencing. And we confirmed that uh, using Western blood of platelet lysates in both families, and we noticed that there was a, a defective MOH10 silencing uh, in these patients that had this GATA1 variant. Then we went back to the literature, and we found this very insightful study from the Cambridge group. These authors used cheap sequencing to, to analyze genome-wide the binding site for five key hematopoietic transcription factors, um, um, and among these five transcription factors, you can see that they studied GATA1, FLY1, and RANX1. So they were able to, to know where these transcription factors were bound in the megacarcite genome. And why did they look at that? Because, of course, when a transcription factor is bound to a specific gene, then it's, it's likely to be regulating the expression of this gene. 
And uh, uh, these authors not only published this very interesting paper with a global, a genome-wide analysis of this data, but they also provided for the scientific community the, the chip sequencing data uh, for the scientific community uh, to, re to reuse it. And uh, uh, so we were really glad that uh, this uh, Cambridge group did this job and uh, published the, the data before hard Brexit occurs. And so this is what we did. We downloaded the data and we uh, reanalyzed this data, focusing on the MYH10 locus, so a very sharp analysis of this data. And uh, as you can see on the slide, Runx1 and Fly1, but also GADA1, had, could co-occupy regulatory sequences in the MYH10 gene. And these regulatory sequences were the promoter, it's the blue arrows, and an intronic regulatory element in the intron 8 of the MOH10 gene, which had never been described before. At that point, to evaluate the transcriptional activity of GADA1 on this specific intronic element, we cloned this sequence of approximately 700 bases to obtain a luciferized reporter vector. And we observed that uh, the GADA one had indeed a transcriptional activity on this uh, intronic enhancer. And we also found that uh, the, the GADA one variants altered this transcriptional activity. So to conclude, Thanks to the study of these very rare uh, GADA1 variance carriers, we have unraveled the role of GADA1 in the MYH10 silencing during megakaryopoiesis. So this work uh, raises lots of questions, of course. Um, uh, we, we can ask uh, whether uh, FLY1, RANX1, and uh, GADA1 binds together uh, during this process, directly binds together. We can ask what is the respective contribution of the promoter and of this uh, intronic uh, regulatory element uh, during megakaryopoiesis. Uh, we can ask uh, if, uh, in case of GADA1 deficiency, could we uh, rescue uh, the uh, MYH10 silencing by overexpressing one of the two other partners, Runx1 or Fly1. We could also ask, and this goes beyond hemostasis, beyond megakaryposis, in some malignant megakaryocyte disorders, could we overexpress GATA1 in order to induce, to restore the, poly the polyploidization and thus induce a certain degree of differentiation and thus, why not induce a tumor growth arrest? So uh, it's a very open uh, field of research, very interesting. I'm sure this will uh, go on uh, in the next uh, few years. And uh, uh, the good news is that uh, before the end of my PhD, we somehow finished this research. The bad news is that we do not have a publication in Nature for now, but we'll keep trying. And with that, I would like to uh, thank all the people involved in this research, my mentors, Professor Lessi, uh, Professor Chambos, Professor Michel, my thesis supervisor, Marjorie Poggi, the funders of this study, the patients and their family, and of course, uh, Theresa May uh, for delaying Brexit as long as possible. Thank you very much for your attention.